Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. We greet the brethren here present and the, war, the ones who are watching us online with the peace of the Lord Jesus. I invite the church to stand up in reverence to the reading of the word which is located in the Gospel of Luke. Luke 5, chapter 5. We're going to read a couple of verses from verse 12 on to, to 16. Luke 5, we're going to read from verse 12. If the brethren want to help the visitors, it will be nice if you can share your Bible with the visitors. Amen. This is the word of the, of the Lord. Is here also in the projection. And it happened when he was in a certain city that, that behold, a man who was full of leprosy saw Jesus and he fell on his face and implored him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then he put out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he charged him to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest and make an offering for your cleansing as a testimony to them, just as Moses commanded. However, the report went around concerning him all the, the more, and a gr great multitude came together to hear and to be healed by him of their in infirmities. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. The church may be seated. My brethren, this message is something that is interesting because because it was it was seen by at least three men that wrote what we just read. Here we see the vision of Luke. Mark also wrote about the same passage, about the same happening, and Matthew was also was present. And when we read the three uh, descriptions written by three different men, we will see that each one of them contributes so that our understanding today would be completely encompassing in the sense that we would understand everything that God wants for us. So when we see in Matthew, it says that Jesus was coming. It speaks about the Sermon of the Mountain where he spent a period preaching, relaying what was God's message of the Father and teaching regarding many topics. And now, Matthew says that soon after Jesus comes down, he heals this man. And then we see that Jesus is an an example for us. He not only speaks that he was going to do it, he not only left for us a teaching, he not only left for us the gospel, something that leads us to have a greater closeness with God, but he also is the one who is beside us, leading us, speaking to us, giving us the opportunity demonstrating God's love towards our lives. Jesus never forsook man. Jesus never turned his face uh, away from man. So everyone that went towards Jesus, everyone that understood that Jesus was the only and best resort, the, those received the blessing 
whatever it was, whether it was physical or spiritual, whatever it was. But they all, all the ones who went to Jesus, they left with a blessing. Because Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the one that we need in every moment, in every situation of our life. When man finds in Jesus everything that he might need, and Jesus is the one that comes towards us faster than anything else. There is no medication or injection on the vein. There is nothing that may come towards man with an answer, with a solution, with peace. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. And here we see in Luke, when Luke speaks about this man, because Luke was a doctor, he describes a, with a little more details what he has seen. Matthew and Mark says that a leopard came close to Jesus, but Luke says that a man taken over by leprosy. Have you seen it? And it happened when he was in a certain city. Behold, a man who was full of leprosy. So it was a situation I was worthy of pity. A man that surely, according to Luke's eyes, was completely deformed because leprosy does that. Leprosy erodes everything. When a person is in a situation like this, with the body filled with leprosy, taken over by leprosy, surely this man was already missing parts of his body. That's what leprosy does. Leprosy goes eating the flesh. And there are people that lose an ear, finger, nose sometimes the toes and as the, the situation goes worse and, and advance in a worse stage people end up dying so when the Bible speaks about leprosy the Bible is actually it represents sin when by the mother Bible when God left for us this example of this experience it was because God wants to work in us in the area of sin. Because leprosy, spiritually, is symbolizes sin, similar to sin. Sin does that to man. Sin eats up everything and leads man to a life of social isolation, in complete isolation. And one of the characteristics of leprosy is the lack, lack of sensibility. Today, this disease is controlled, but is under control by today's modern medicine. But in Jesus' time, the situation was much more difficult. It was difficult to be detected. So. One of the ways to detect leprosy was through the sensibility. If you got hurt, you would not feel it. If we, we would, would deal with hot water, you would not feel the heat and would get burned. It was a sign that leprosy was already taking over the body. And here leprosy, it is a sign of impurity. A man, a woman that was that had leprosy, they had to be uh, set apart. They needed to, there was a place that was pre-established by the community, and there this person would go away from the family, say goodbye to everyone. They lose everything, they lose their work, they lose wife, children, everything. And they would go there and stay there until death came to them. They could not have any contact with the rest of the community, with no one. If someone came close, they had to 
raise their arm and say, I'm impure. See, how terrible. They had to declare themselves impure. It was the law. They were forced to do this. If they did not do this and somebody noticed, they could have been stoned. So leprosy did that to man. It was a complete separation. Who can live like this? Being rejected by all in isolation, away, and sin does that to men. Sin takes men to a stage before God where they go straight from God. Sin leads men to go completely astray from God. And the worst this thing regarding sin is the lack of sensibility because the more you live with sin in the beginning you feel like oh I, I sinned and then second time you don't feel so much discomfort and then in a while sin has become a routinary it becomes something that is part of your life you no longer notice that you are making a mistake before God. And this man was in this situation, filled with leprosy. He was already, surely, he was already deformed. According to Luxus's eyes, he was in a stage that was deplorable. In a very advanced stage, because his body was already completely taken over by leprosy. And this man surely had no type of chance of opportunity with anyone. He could not be in any location other than the location that was established. Every city had places like this. Uh, a place for the leopard. It was a place that was please established and people with leprosy had to stay there. But the Bible says that this man met with Jesus and the Bible says that this man was in a location where Jesus passed by. The word states to us and when he sees Jesus when he saw Jesus, he makes a plea to God. He makes a request. Surely, uh, a cry, something that came from within. And he says the following, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And when we see the other, the other books, the other Gospels, the Bible, we say that Jesus was taken over by a great compassion. Jesus spoke to him. And Jesus touched on this man. Now, brother, the difference between what is God's, the difference between Jesus and us is that Jesus, when he looks to man, he sees man's interior. And for God, there is no difficulty that cannot be resolved. I don't know how you entered here tonight in the house of the Lord. I don't know what caused you to come here, but you need to know one thing. Doesn't matter the size of your pain. Doesn't matter the difficulty that you are in. It doesn't matter the anguish that you are going through, the suffering that you are going through. Tonight, God has an answer to what you came seeking. Because Jesus, besides having compassion on man, Jesus extended his hand towards man. 
uh, he is different than us. Many times you, when you see someone, the person is in difficulty. Many times you see a beggar or someone with an infirmity. You have may have a compassion or feel sorry for that person. It hurts your heart to see the, a person in that situation, certain situations. But we cannot do anything. Many times people see others in certain situations. They can do something, but they don't do it. Others, they cannot do. If you see someone in hospital with cancer or a lethal disease, what can we do? A person that is being already being condemned by medicine, people that are in a situation that no one can save, no one can do anything for that person. But Jesus is the one that looks towards man and he has an answer on his hands. Because Jesus, because he has compassion on man, because he loves man, because he has a love so great for us, he let go of everything, let go of eternity, let go of the presence of God. He became man, and here he died for us. This is our Jesus. <coughs> this is the Jesus that you know. And this is the Jesus whom we serve. My, bro my brethren, it is even difficult with words to try to explain who Jesus is. He is everything that we need. The word tells us that Jesus, when he looked to that man, taken over by great compassion, he extends his hand and says, touch him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. That's it. That's all that man needs. A word from God. That's all what that's all we need. God's grace. That's all that we need. The Lord turning towards us. It was with the same gaze that when Jesus looked to Peter in the situation with Peter was denying Jesus. Jesus' gaze when he looked towards Peter was a gaze of love. Because at that moment Jesus did not condemn Peter for Peter having denied Jesus three times. When Jesus looks to Peter after Jesus spent the night being judged and condemned, Jesus looked to Peter and Peter understood. It is with the same gaze that Jesus is here, looking towards us. You have not been forgotten. You have never been forgotten. And your place is not outside. Man was not made to be outside of God's presence. Man was not created by God to live in isolation. Man was not created by God to live out there in the world waiting for death on the no online to be executed. No. Man was created by God to live eternally and to have fellowship with Him. Man was made by God to be continue to speak continually with God. Man was made by God to have intimacy with God, to be God's friend. And tonight you entered here because God wants to be your friend. God wants to, to be for you everything that you need. It doesn't matter what you're going through. Tonight you can leave this place with the healing that you need, the healing of the soul. That's the greatest he healing that man can have. Sometimes we get tired, physical healing can be resolved. Sometimes the physical, uh, physical tiredness can be resolved. So I got really tired a whole year. You can take a vacation. Uh, in Brazil, it's 30 days of vacation. Here, it's just one week. Let's still go on a cruise, go on a vacation, travel. Sometimes people do this. 
they they get a little less tired and sometimes it may resolve their physical tiredness but the healing of the soul the depression the suffering of the heart the pain in the heart the absence of God cannot be resolved with anything else and that's what is killing people out there that's what leading men the millionaires the people the famous people the people that don't have God but they are influenced in this world. These people have everything, but they don't have anything. Why is that? Because they don't have what man needs the most, which is peace, that only Jesus can give. Is the tranquility of for you to place place your head on on a pillow, tranquil comfortably, and waking up tomorrow without any. Uh, stress. Well, if you have a death, you can't wait for it, right? But you are there in peace with God. You are seeking the Lord. You are in fellowship with the Lord. You are praying to God. You maintain your closeness with God. That's what it is to live salvation here in this life. How many out there that don't have this that we have? Many. Many don't have this tranquility, this peace, this closeness that we have with God. Many, many, how many out there live in isolation without families, being rejected by all, in anguish, taking their own lives, without a future, without a destination, without knowing what is going to happen tomorrow? How many live like this? Many. But tonight, Jesus here, in the same way that he gave this man what he needed, he also can give to you what you are seeking. And the healing that Jesus gives is a com healing that is complete. It's not just a medicine. It's, a, it's not a Band-Aid. No. And Jesus said that when he touched that man and look at that time it was illegal for a person to touch a leopard no one could touch a leopard that's why they needed to be in isolation not even the family the wife or children but Jesus here he's the one who breaks through everything because if you touched a leopard you could also acquire the disease if you were pure, would become you would become impure, but Jesus is the one that that carries purity to men. Jesus is the one that carries, that leads men towards sanctity. Jesus is the one that brings the solution and salvation to man, because man becomes a sinner when man was set apart in the Garden of Eden, sin became part of man. Man acquired sin. Man became aware of sin. It's, it's just like leprosy. Sin is inside of man. But tonight, when many out there feel like they are unworthy of being in God's presence, how many out there no one feel like they're worthy of coming to the house of God and speak to God. Many people feel like this. The enemy used this. He accuses them saying, you are going to church? You are a sinner. Yesterday you, you were doing this, this and that. You are going to church? That's how the enemy works. And he leads men to a complete isolation from God. You are not worthy. You can't. Who are you? But Jesus is the one that comes and touches. Why is that? Because Jesus, he took our sins away. He is the one that, when he dies on, on the cross, he takes on our sins. He takes over our sins because he's the only one that can 
erase our sins and make us pure again. Only Jesus can do it because Jesus touched the sinner. That's why Jesus touched on that man with the leprosy. He made the leprosy to disappear. The Bible says that immediately, and the Bible says that immediately the leprosy left him. This not only heals men, but makes everything new. That man that surely had missing fingers or ears, maybe nose, I don't know. But that man left there, left that place completely rebuilt. Uh, he left that place as a new man. He was completely renewed, reconstructed, we can say. And only Jesus can do this. When man goes to God's presence, he goes completely and con with the ability to speak to God. When man goes to Jesus, when man recognizes that he's, he's nothing, but Jesus is everything, that Jesus is everything. That Jesus is the way, he is the one who takes us to God. Like this man, he recognizes his disease. He recognized his situation. And he cried out for help. So if you entered here tonight, you can at this moment cry out, cry out to the Lord. You can speak with God. And God's going to give you an opportunity. He's going to give you the condition for you to live this place completely transformed. A new creature. And whatever you did, whenever you have done in the past, now in Jesus, we are not going to do it anymore. Because God does that. Soon everything was disappeared. It was This man was cleansed. He became a new person. And it, but he told uh, him not to tell anyone, but to go to the priest and to present himself to the priest. Why is that? Because only the priest could... Uh, uh, allowed the leper to go back to the society. The priest was the one that would look, examine the leopard, and um, tell the leopard that he could go back into society. Jesus is the one that places man on his place, the place of origin. Jesus takes man out of the, the mud, takes man out of sin, takes man out of the defeat, takes man out of the situation where he is living and places man back into the way. Only Jesus does that. Go to the priest. Go to the house of God. Go into God's presence because only here in God's house, in the house of the Father, man can receive the complete blessing. When man is in fellowship with God, then he can present himself. He can be known by God. Because according to our own merits, because I'm good, because I'm a good, good husband, I'm a good employee, a good boss, that it is meaningless. But when man has an experience with Jesus, he becomes a new creation Jesus. And now the Holy Spirit taken over his heart. Now he's prepared by the Holy Spirit to be a citizen of heaven. And now he can be in the house of the Father and receive the benefit of salvation. Amen. My brethren, tonight the Lord has brought you here because you surely have experienced, have been living in an erroneous way. You have done things that do not please God. You have done things that lead you from the separation from God because sin does that. The sin produce what produces what bothers God. Sin in man's life bothers God. But tonight you can be delivered from this. Tonight you can receive from God the condition of being always pleading to God and the blood of Jesus will deliver you, will wash your sin. 
But it's not being sinner, no. But you no longer carry the weight of sin and you have fear of, of not practicing sin, of not continuing in the practice of sin. That's what God does. Jesus points out the way. This is the way, walk in it. And tonight we're being led by the Lord to know this. Because only Jesus can do this. Because the word of Jesus is a word of power. Amen. We're going to, at this moment, pray to the Lord. The praise group is going to sing a song, and you do according to what that man said. And I say, say, Jesus, if you want me to be cleansed, God will give to you what you need. The condition of being a citizen of heaven.
Lord Jesus, that man、um, goes you know, waiting to die. He surely did not know how many years he had, how much time he had to live. When he told Jesus, "If you want, if you're willing, you can clean me," and Jesus said, "I'm willing. Be cleansed." Jesus once was on a cross, in between two sinners. One turned to Jesus and said, "When you enter into heaven, in paradise, remember me." You know what Jesus said? Today you will be with me in paradise. My friend, Jesus does not heal you tomorrow. Jesus does not say, "Oh, I owe you a month away. You're going to be healed." The word of God is a word of power. He's going to say, "Just needs to say, and you'll be healed today. I have a blessing for you today." If God says this, it is. This is decreed, and the Lord is decreeing the life for many here tonight. God is operating peace. God is operating tranquility. God is healing and giving hope to many who entered here, because that's what we need—a word of power from the part of God. I invite the church to stand up. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. I want to praise you for the blessing of salvation, for the joy of serving you, because truly you are our balm. You are Lord. You are everything for us. You are our refreshing. What the one Father that loves us in an unconditional way. You are the one that does not look look into man's imperfection, but you are. The one who are always willing to embrace the lost souls. That's why we surrender our gratitude to you for the deeds of the Lord in our midst, for the assurance that one day we're going to be living with you in eternity. Because we serve a living God, a wonderful God, a God that loves us in a wonderful way. We can say this with great certainty, because we feel this and we know the moving of the Lord every day in our lives. That's why we re- rejoice in your house, raise your name for everything, everything that you have done during the day for the spiritual feast that you prepared for us in, uh, in our life, for our lives, for the lives that went out and, and into the waters were baptized, for our salvation because your good spirit has come here so that we could receive a blessing from the part of the Lord. We thank you, therefore, in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. My brother, the Lord was showing that there is a woman that entered here tonight, in, in, with the situation. She doesn't feel like she is worthy. Doesn't feel like she that she is properly ready to be in God's presence. But the Lord is telling her that she is very welcome here. You have been brought here by the Lord. You didn't enter here by chance. You didn't enter here because you wanted, but because because God brought you to this place. And tonight, the Lord is giving you this opportunity for you to open up your heart, speak with God, and to hear God's voice. The Lord also has revealed a youth. She, in her. Her daily life, her daily concerns with the future, with what, what is is to come. She has her plans, her projects. She writes down, but tonight she needs to understand one thing: everything that you have planned for your life, if you place in God's altar, He will honor you. So you need to rest in the Lord, youth. You have a future ahead of you, a whole life ahead of you. Professional life, sentimental life, family. So you need to seek from the Lord. We know that this sometimes it 
it robs uh, our rest, some the concern, what is going to happen to us in the, in the future, in every aspect. So the Lord is telling you, pray to Him. Pray to God. Place in God's author your dreams, and you will see how it will take control of your life. The Lord was also showing that there is a place the place of man is not outside of his presence. Man was made to be here before God, receiving all the sustenance, all the direction, because that's why we have been created. We were created by God to live an eternity in God's presence. The Lord also has given a revelation regarding a woman. This is a revelation that is very clear. A woman that, who is here and she has a nodule in one of her breasts. And she's very worried about this because it has all the characteristics of being uh, malignant. But the Lord wants to give you uh, healing. Open up your heart, pray to God, and that God can transform this into blessing. God wants, and He can do this, but you need to pray to the Lord that you see the glory of God. Amen. Let's pray, bring ourselves to a close, and soon after, if you want an assistance, see, uh, follow up with us, an explanation, a great explanation of the Word, or what the service tonight was, we are here available to help you. Lord, we ask that you may once again receive our service, and that we may receive from the Lord victories throughout this week that is beginning and that we may see the care of the Lord and that we may be targets of your love and your mercy and your care. Send your angels, Lord, to go ahead of us, breaking the barriers, breaking the traps, breaking the obstacles, what Lord has many times is placed on our path to cause us trouble, to steal our peace, to call any ty every type of uh, discomfort, but we ask that we may operate on our behalf, receive the adoration of your church, and transform into blessings to all of us, that we may continue laying your hand upon us, giving us direction, giving us victory. Is a prayer that we say, I'm really thankful in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The brethren may be seated. We are, at this month, praying for our neighbors. So the brethren should be praying for this topic and uh, at the right moment next week. We're going to have another service on behalf of our neighbors. So uh, I advise you to invite our neighbors so that we may all be offering ourselves to the Lord. I'd like to thank the ones who are visiting us. And we want to wish everyone the peace of the Lord.